Some will never understand our passion about cars. We spend endless amounts of hours, blood, sweat, and tears working on these projects to turn them into works of art. We hang out in parking lots and we unify over these machines that we somehow believe have a soul. We celebrate engines, metal, alloys, glass, and rubber. We especially feel the pain when a fellow enthusiast has lost their car to something as terrible as theft. A car should remain with its rightful owner. With this mission in mind, we set out to create an easy to install, easy to use, simple solution to this problem. We developed the Ghost Lock. The Ghost Lock. Keep cars with their rightful owners. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. If you can't tell, the DA is in the air and I've been working on it off camera, your favorite thing. Obviously I've removed the front end, the headlights, just to keep them safe. Um, and I've been working on getting everything out of the way as much as possible um, to drop this whole engine and trans out. So my plan is to drop the whole engine and trans. So I'm gonna catch up to speed on what I've removed. Obviously up here I have removed the exhaust manifold, the power steering pump and brackets, as well as the AC compressor and brackets. The system is still charged, so that's why I'm trying to keep the AC system intact. We are going to drop this engine and trans out of the bottom. That is the plan. I've got the battery tray removed, the distributor removed, all of the harness disconnected. And I gotta be honest with you, this is my first time dealing with an automatic DA. I've done a bunch of automatic EGs, even EFs, and this, this by far has been the biggest pain in the ass. Biggest pain in the ass. Unless you find the most perfect DA like I did, don't do this. So. There's all this extra vacuum BS map sensor that's pretty much ready to go. We've got the brake booster disconnected from the intake manifold, the uh, cruise control, the throttle cable. So everything on this side is ready to go. The only thing that is attached is this engine mount here. The T-bracket, all the bolts have been completely removed from the T-bracket. However, I still can't quite get it out and I cannot get the starter out. I was gonna try to just go ahead and get the starter out. I can only get one bolt out. I really can't get a bolt in or a, a ratchet in to get the bolt off on the backside just to make things a little bit easier. She's ready to come out. So the only thing attached is this mount and that mount. Underneath, of course, the exhaust obviously has been removed. The axles have been pulled. Just about everything underneath is out of the way, ready to go and drop on the ground. Then there's this stuff. You can tell here that that is the automatic shifter, which there's a current hole for. I had a little bit of an issue getting that out because a couple of the bolts were a little rusted, but essentially is pretty simple. You basically just unbolt and unplug whatever you see and take it out. I mean, it's just that simple. Then there's all of this underneath here, which has been the pedal set. And if you notice these two pipes here, they have to go back in. That is the automatic computer that was covering the space of, and I've gone ahead and removed the dash, um, bezel and cluster, obviously. Uh, I had to drop the steering column and I'll probably have to drop it back down. I was basically test fitting the pedals. The pedals essentially bolt up everywhere where they need to go. However, uh, the clutch switch doesn't quite fit. I'm not really sure why at this point, but I'm still trying to fit this thing in here. And I have to drill a hole for the clutch cable. So that's where we're at on this one. So I'm definitely gonna have to drill a hole for the clutch cable somewhere over here in this area. That's gonna be the most challenging thing of all of this. So we're really gonna see what's going on with all this, but in this video, this week, we're getting this damn engine and trans out. What's going in? Well, that's the question of the day. I'm going to go get some uh, buckets so I can drain the coolant and the trans fluid so I can go ahead and get that out of the way. If you notice, we have our YS1 transmission ready to go, and over here we have a da-da-da-da. 
a B16A head, and we'll go over that stuff later. Yeah, we've got a B16A head here. I've been debating on whether to do a fresh B20 VTEC, you know me, B20 VTECs. However, you can save a couple bucks and use this short block for the B18A, mostly because it is technically low miles with 99,000 miles. So that's the plan for right now. Of course, things may change as we go, but the main thing uh, in this video, this week, we're gonna try to get the engine and trans out, get the car on the ground, over to the car wash, spray the bay out, and then decide what to do with the illustrious brake lines and ABS system. So stay tuned for that. Oh boy, draining the coolant. Aren't you excited? I kind of am. I, I'm actually kind of excited to get the uh, radiator out of here. Obviously makes some things a little easier. Follow my tip. Whenever you take a bolt out, put it back. So, you know, for example, here's a radiator bolt. Just gonna put it back. All right, so when this is done draining, I'll uh, get back to you. So we've got the radiator out, the transmission lines loop. So because it's an auto, it's got a uh, Transmission fluid lines going into the bottom of the radiator. That's what these are for if you ever wondered. So I've got those looped, got the radiator pulled out. I've just been cleaning the engine, trying to get her nice and clean. So we're almost there. We're about to drop this bad boy out. All right, another day working on the car. We've got the coolant and the trans fluid all drained into a bucket. Disgustingly, having to dispose that will be fun. I'm gonna just point out a couple things. Um, we are just about ready to drop this thing out. I've got the little ABS pump over here. There's a bracket for the battery. I may remove that. Again, I'm gonna try to retain all of the AC lines. I have the coolant hoses looped. Now, a couple things underneath. I don't know if you can see any of this. The light is not great. Now, this is the torque converter. Uh, there are bolts. 10 millimeter bolts that bolt the torque converter uh, to the flywheel, basically. I've removed all those, they're pretty easy. You just take the 10 millimeter out, rotate it. You can rotate it with a screwdriver or by hand. It's not that hard. They've all been removed, so I won't have to remove them uh, once I get the engine and transmission on the ground and I wanna take the automatic transmission off. I've obviously removed all the bolts and the shielding on the bottom side, so the only thing that's remaining is the actual transmission bolts. I'm gonna get a little bit more, more prepared and then uh, we're gonna drop this engine and trans out of here. So here we got our dolly. We got this one from Harbor Freight. This is like one of the bigger ones. <laughs> out as far as height to be able to get the motor out so we're gonna put it on the jack stands for now and uh, you know reassess the uh, height issue here in a minute so the good news is for now she is out and uh, you know we can begin oh wait 
missed one vacuum hose. So, yeah. What we're gonna do is uh, get, you know, a, a, probably get a block or something to put on the jack and give it a little bit more height. Let's see if we can't get this thing in the air a little bit more. And, uh, you know, get this motor out from underneath it. If we have to tear it down even farther, then that's what we gotta do, but I doubt we have to do that. We got her out, boys. She is out. Now we can put this thing on the ground. separated. Now we can start prepping everything. So here's the DA in all of its beautiful glory. We definitely need to clean and spray off this engine bay. I've been going back and forth with decisions. Do I want to keep the power steering? Do I want to loop the power steering? I'll be 100% honest with you. Uh, when I had the power steering on, it didn't really feel like power steering. Unless, you know, you're sitting in the, sitting still. The one thing, so I've been going back and forth about what to do, keep the power steering, or to just loop it. Um, to be 100% honest with you, this has got to go more than anything. It's just, it's just really stupid. So I'm hoping that getting rid of the ABS won't be too much of a nightmare. It's just such an archaic, um, silly system and it takes up so much space. Of course, you know, thoughts of wire tucking and things like that. going back and forth about a lot of the stuff has just got me wondering what to do. But I am definitely going to be wire tucking this, but I'm definitely gonna be getting rid of the uh, ABS for sure. There's just no sense in keeping it, honestly. I mean, you can see it's already pretty crusty. It's not that big of a deal to go ahead and get it now. I'm hoping that because this is centered here, that it actually shouldn't be too hard to just, uh, put a proportioning valve there. It may not be the prettiest, but I don't see why not. 
because we've got the rears, the two from the, all of the, the pieces basically just line up there, so. But again, what I ultimately need to do is decide what to do, what engine to put in this. You know, I definitely want to have a VTEC motor in this car. This is Mark from the future. I've made some decisions. I'm gonna go over what decisions I've made, why I've made them, and then we're gonna get into the video of what's actually happening. First off, we're gonna to get to it. The B18A has been pulled out of the DA9. The B16 is in the garage, as you can tell from the EF hatch. Now, I have actually decided to actually pull this engine out of the EF and put it into the DA. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna be like, no, don't do that, but there's a reason why, hear me out. The budget to really go all out for the DA is not really there right now. So the only thing that I can think of to keep this simple is to put the B16A in the DA, put the B18 as it is into the EF. Now the reason why is the original plan for the DA9 was to take the LS B18A and put a B16 head on it and do an LS VTEC. However, when I got this head, I thought it was ready to go. It is not ready to go. I wanna switch over a bunch of parts, valve seals, the LMAs, and this head needs a resurface. All of that is gonna take some time. So some of the other reasons of why I wanna take this B16 and put it in the DA is because this engine has P30 pistons and Type R cams, Brian Crowler valve train, Basically, it's freshly rebuilt, and I really want this engine into the DA9, but my plan long-term with the DA9 is to probably do a B18C block or a B20 block build later on with this head. Now, the reason why I have also, another reason why I've also chosen to pull this out and put it in is because this motor technically needs a tune. I do have Han data on it. Big shout out to Tony Johansson, Project 88, for hooking me up with that. This has Han data on it, and I've just basically got a street tune on it. Now, if I were to do an LS VTEC in the DA9, that would need two cars that need a tune. As the B18A is, it's a healthy motor with only 99,000 miles. It's still in great condition. The timing belt's been changed, and to tear this motor down, would be a kind of a shame. Also, the transmission that's in this car is a B16 transmission, but I'm pretty sure it's a 4.2 final drive. That will stay in this car with that engine. The YS1 transmission is going to go on the B16 and go into the DA9. Now, I went through over a lot of that stuff pretty quickly. See if you guys could keep up with me. So, long story short, the B18A is going into the EF with the S1 transmission. The B16 with the YS1 is going into the DA9, essentially making it a fun car, almost like a GSR, because this motor definitely uh, makes more power than a stock B16. Also, this is the most cost-effective way that I can do this and keep both cars I've actually toyed with the idea of selling this car off, but for now, I'm going to pull this engine out, get all the transmission clutch stuff switched over to this engine, put that in, and this car will be a fun car to drive. It's gonna be that simple. And then we can move forward with the DA9. So that's the plan for now. See you back at the end of the video. Update, I've got the Civic up in the air. I've only been working on the top half of it, so we're gonna cover everything that I've done so far. So first things first, I took off the reservoir, the ground, the cable on this side, folded it over, disconnected the cable, disconnected the wires on this side, folded it over, disconnected the throttle cable, the clutch cable, the fuel return, the brake line hose, or the brake booster hose, all on this side. So the side is pretty much done, as well as the starter wire, the fuse box wire, the fuel line has been removed. Also, don't forget the speed sensor will hang you up. And um, so far we're looking good. The only thing we've got left to do up top pretty much is uh, drop the header, drain the coolant. I need to go get a bucket for that. Um, and then we can do everything on the bottom side, which is disconnect the shift linkage, remove the axles, subframe, drop it out. So we're moving quite along, it's been about 25, 30 minutes, taking my time, making sure I get everything um, nice and clean. I just wanna do this nice, simple and clean. So we're moving right along. Um, I'm gonna go get some things and then come back and get at it. Check it in one more time, here we go. Does it look like much has been done up here? You'd be right. 
and that's because everything has been pulled out. The subframe has been pulled out, the axles have been pulled out on either side, uh, let alone this swap actually has the Type R aluminum uh, clutch cover, which is pretty cool. Shift linkage has been disconnected. I don't know if you can see all that. So if you could tell, other than the motor mount, she is ready to come out, except for, gotta drain that damn coolant. You know, I hate that. So I'm gonna go get a, an actual another pallet like that with some wheels, and I'm gonna come back. Let me yank this bad boy out. We're back and we are draining the coolant to a bucket. Just gonna chill out, let that do its thing. We would always pull the cap off, help it breathe, let it flow a little better. Oh, okay flowing now and if you notice just got another dolly put that dolly underneath the car blow it down like we did the da undo the side mounts and then lift the car back up pull it out and hopefully we can uh see if we can't get the transmission off get the flywheel and clutch and all that assembled attached to the b18 this thing she's about ready to come out the t-bracket has been completely unbolted but i will not be able to get it out until i you know bring the car down and Move some things around. The only thing I might need to remove is this battery box down here. We'll see. I think we might be able to get past that maybe. I don't know. Right, we're gonna go ahead and lower this thing down, get these two mounts off. And then uh, drive the car out, get this engine out. transmission separated from the B16. Now we can uh, start the whole process of putting two cars together that I absolutely destroyed. So, stay tuned. This is where I'm gonna wrap this up. See what happens in the next video. This battery's dead. Update, um, I've been sick the last couple days, but I have gotten a few things done. We've got the engine over here pretty much completed. Nice sprayed. You know, it's all nice and pretty. You know how I like to do. If you hate painting engines, comment below. I'm gonna be wrinkling this black later. However, we're gonna get this bad boy bolted in. Before I do that, I'm gonna put the uh, harness on it. I've got the DA intake manifold on here with the B16 throttle body uh, and a bunch of block offs to kind of clean up all the vacuum stuff up. So I'm gonna get you on the tripod, put the harness on it, get this bad boy into there. on jack stands she's in she's on jack stands it's time to start bolting buttoning everything up 
putting it together. I feel like trash. I'm sorry I'm not filming a ton, but I'm just gonna get through this. So, looks good. Again, it's the same transmission as before, only the engine is different, so. Same wiring harness, same everything. So, if I wanna go VTEC later, it's not a problem. All the wires are there. All right, I'm gonna get busy. Catch you up, I've been powering through with some Red Bull and uh, some Claritin over here. So I've got the whole engine bolted in. I've got it completely wired up. Uh, throttle cable connected, clutch cable connected, starter connected, battery connected, everything underneath connected. Axles, header, exhaust, all connected. Everything's hooked up. Basically, I could probably put it uh, on the ground. What I'd like to do is actually see if it will start. There is obviously no radiator, no coolant, no trans fluid, but I'm not driving it anywhere. I just want to see if it'll start up. Uh, it still has the uh, ECU on it with a Type R map, so it should just start it. It should be okay. You know, we're not we're not running it for very long or anything like that. Everything looks good. I just want to see, you know, if it's got any crazy, um, crazy idles, uh, fuel leaks, things like that. So. Let's get uh, started on that. So the first thing that we want to do, now normally I would probably prime the motor, which means spin it over a bunch to build oil pressure, but this engine was running a couple days ago. So it's probably fine. So what I'm gonna do is see if the battery's working, scan. Oh, we have that. So now we need to check. Let's do it again. Let's check for fuel leaks. Biggest, most important thing is check for fuel leaks. Anytime that you've done this, you know, disconnected the fuel system. Um, I would say normally I could smell it, but right now I can't smell anything, so. All right, it's, uh, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes later. So what I did was is I cannibalized this other distributor and it was good. I took out the uh, coil igniter and put it into this distributor so it plugs up. Now, let's see if she'll start. Now, we know we're going to get a VTEC code. She'll load it up. Whoa. She fired right up. Okay. Is ready to go. All right, well, that's time to put a radiator in here and uh, get this thing going. All right, probably a. Uh, just switch the ECU out for a P75. Now we gotta get this thing put back together. I'm trying to bleed it right now. Let's see if we can get this thermostat to open. She is being stubborn, obviously it's a little cool outside. Um so yeah. This hose is hot. It's still cold. Okay, kids. Forgot to close this video out. Drives like it does before. Or it drives like it did before. This thing's running great. It's actually a little more fun, honestly. Um, I don't want to say a little more fun. Uh, definitely has a little more torque. In low range, obviously. But it feels just as nimble and quick as it did before. It doesn't feel like it's lost anything. Obviously, it doesn't rev real high on the top end. great 
fill a fun car. Don't have to constantly rev the shit out of it though. Anyways, we're gonna wrap up the video. Click a like if you like this video, share it, all that stuff. You know what it is. See you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.